During this series on supporting CAS, we want to recognize each week uh, individuals who might not be, quote, prime time players that you see up on the stage every week, but individuals who God uses greatly uh, as servants of his and servants of this church. And today I want to recognize, and you'll see it on the screen scrolling, uh, our board of deacons and trustees. And so I want you to know how much I appreciate these men. They're elected by the congregation and uh, they uh, do a lot of hard work uh, here at the church. And I'm thankful that uh, these uh, two boards really uh, function as one. Uh, they work and serve in unity and harmony and we're just uh, very, very thankful uh, for all of our deacons and our trustees. And so would you uh, join me in just thanking them for their hard work? They uh, normally on Communion Sunday uh, will be, would be serving the congregation. Uh, today they will not be serving, but you'll see them up front because they're going to be served. And as you know, this is a Communion Sunday. And I was just uh, sitting and I said something to uh, Pastor Rob. You know, we're living in such strange uh, days, aren't we? I mean, regardless, they're such strange days. And when I looked up at the communion table, it was interesting to see the elements and a bottle of sanitizer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't think we've seen that before. You ought to get a picture of that because that's a picture of uh, the times in which uh, we live. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll abide by all of our regulations and so forth during communion today, but uh, I guess if any of those who serve uh, need to clean their hands, it's right there and we're ready. Well, today we're going to uh, look at, uh, in the third message, an individual in the New Testament by the name of Bartimaeus. And the emphasis in every passage of scripture about Bartimaeus is that he's blind. And so we're talking about blind Bartimaeus. And it is found, the story is found in, in three different portions of scripture. In Matthew, we're not going to read that today, Mark and Luke. And so all three writers talk about uh, Bartimaeus. Matthew doesn't mention his name. In fact, Matthew also tells us that there were two blind people. But uh, in the scriptures, we find uh, only the name of Bartimaeus in both uh, Mark and Luke. And so I want to read, first of all, in the book of, of Mark, I want to read the account uh, that Mark gives us on blind Bartimaeus. And uh, I think this morning as well, I'm going to turn you to, to the gospel of Luke and uh, really see what uh, Luke has to say about Bartimaeus as well. But in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, beginning in verse 46, here's what Mark tells us about blind uh, Bartimaeus. And they came to Jericho. And so when you read the different accounts, I do want you to realize the context in which you know, we have this story. He talks about Jericho and talks about really their travels, uh, really from Galilee all the way to Jerusalem. And so the Lord is getting very, very close to Jerusalem. Now that's important as you think of the context of this story. And so here, even in Mark, we're, we're told that uh, they came to Jericho. In fact, when you read the accounts, sometimes it gets a little confusing because it tells us that they're leaving Jericho, they're going into Jericho, they're near Jericho. And you need to know, uh, by way of context, that there's two Jerichos. There's the Old Testament uh, ancient Jericho, and then there's a new Jericho. And so uh, there are times where you're leaving one city, but you're going into the new city or from the new city into the old city. And so there's no real confusion here uh, between the writers. So verse 46, and they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho, meaning the Lord here, uh, with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, uh, the son of uh, uh, Timaeus. And so uh, Bartimaeus just means 
son of Timaeus, Bar Timaeus. And so uh, he's sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and to say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent, to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? Maybe that's a question all of us should ask today. If Jesus came by us and he stopped and looked at each, each one of us, put his finger out and said, what can I do for you today? What would your answer be? Well, notice, and the blind man said to him, Rabbi, teacher, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on his way. Now, the next portion that I want you to follow along as I read is in the Gospel of uh, Luke. Uh, Luke especially gives us really a, a great great details of the context in which this story is given to us. And so we find in Luke that in chapter 18, there's a conversation with this persistent widow who uh, really teaches us how we're to be persistent in our prayers. There's a conversation between uh, with a Pharisee uh, and uh, a tax collector and how they pray. And one was self-righteous and the other cried out for mercy from, from God. And then there's a conversation, if you remember, with the rich young ruler who asked a very important question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? He didn't like the answer to it, but he asked the right question. And then Jesus deals in, in the Gospel of Luke, in fact, all of these chapters, for the third time he tells uh, his disciples, his followers, that he's not going to be on the earth very long. He's almost into Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem he's going to go before uh, judges, and he's going to be condemned, and he's going to go to the cross and die. This is the third time, in fact, uh, we're going to read uh, a little portion of that in just a minute, but I want you to notice then... We find the story of Bartimaeus, and right after the story of Bartimaeus, we find Zacchaeus, which we uh, looked at uh, uh, on another occasion. And so in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, beginning with verse 35, we find Luke's account of the story of blind Bartimaeus. And as he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the road begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered uh, his sight and followed him. And I want you to notice what we're told by Luke here, that uh, he followed him glorifying God. And notice Luke adds this, and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to him. And so we know from the three accounts that there were probably two blind men. Bartimaeus was kind of the, the leader, the, the spokesman, if you will. And so he is the one that uh, we read about by name, especially by uh, Mark. And uh, that could be for a number of reasons. Maybe by the time Mark read uh, or wrote about uh, the gospel, uh, Bartimaeus was maybe a well-known name in the church, and maybe he not only got saved, but began to serve in church. And so uh, Mark knew uh, the specific name of at least one of uh, the blind men. Now, when we think about this, though, I want you to take note in the, the Gospel of Mark that uh, beginning in verse uh, 
Uh, well, let's, let's take note, even uh, beginning in verse 35, and Jesus and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him and said to him, Teacher, we want uh, you to do for us whatever uh, we ask of you. And he said, Well, what is it that you want? And you remember, they wanted to sit one on the left, one on the right, so they were concerned about places of prestige and power. And, uh, you know, they wanted to be recognized as followers of Jesus. Well, then the Lord deals with this and, you know, he tell, teaches us about how, you know, he came uh, not to be uh, served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And so I want you to take notice what he says then in verse 46. This was after Jesus is saying, I have to go to the cross and I'm going to die three times in each gospel. Now, it's interesting, though, in Mark and, and in Matthew... Uh, the first time that Jesus says he has to go to the cross, uh, Peter chimes in. You remember the story? So Peter hears, you know, about this, you know, going to the cross and dying and all. And Peter says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Peter is a real leader. You have to put up with us leaders. Because sometimes we start, you know, we just start leading. And then we're not always right. Well, Peter says, as a leader, imagine, he's telling Jesus this. Whoa, Lord, this is not the way it's going to happen. You could almost hear Jesus saying, excuse me? You know, I'm the Lord of glory, and you're going to tell me it's not the way it's going to happen? And do you remember what Jesus says to Peter when Peter says, no, this isn't going to happen this way? Jesus rebukes him, but he says this, Satan, get behind me. So now the third time, Jesus tells his disciples that he's going to the cross, and they still don't understand. Now, think about that in the context here. He's talking about how he has to be a ransom uh, for many. And uh, so we, we need to understand that that ransom is really talking about a price that is paid to free either a slave or a soldier. And so Jesus is going to be this ransom for us to free us from the slavery of sin and the condemnation of sin. And the disciples don't quite understand it. Later, after the fact, they do get it. I hope we get it today. Because that's what we're doing today when we think about communion. We're thinking about how Jesus ransomed us. He paid the price to free us as slaves, as, as, as sinners. And it's in that context then that we see this story of blind Bartimaeus. Now, I want you to think about the story. First of all, let's think quickly about the condition of Bartimaeus. Scripture tells us, notice verse 46, he was a blind beggar. He didn't have some position of authority. He wasn't wealthy. He was poor. And uh, here is the condition of Bartimaeus. He is not only physically needy, but he is spiritually needy. He is blind. Jesus healed the blind. There was a, there's a great picture here of what Jesus does for us, that we're spiritually dead and, and in our sins, and we are spiritually blind, and Jesus opens the eyes of our hearts and allows us to see our need and to put our faith and trust in him. And so blindness then in this account is showing not just physical blindness, but spiritual blindness as well. And so he's blind. He's in darkness all the time. I don't know if you've ever been anywhere where, where you've truly been in darkness and, and maybe you got a little frightened. I've told this story before of how one of the very first times Dan Sorber and I were in uh, Cuba and we were in Havana, just outside of Havana, and we did probably something we shouldn't have done. We left everybody in the middle of the night while the lights were still on. We went to just check some things out and all the lights in all of Havana went out. And it was the darkest I've ever seen anything. And we didn't know our way around yet. We were really, we, we just stood there hoping and praying that some light starts to shine. And believe me, we were quite happy when all of a sudden the lights came back on. And it seemed like an eternity of being in darkness. Bartimaeus was in darkness all the time. And so 
Bartimaeus probably, you know, being in darkness and being blind, there are other senses that probably kicked in, uh, you know, that were heightened. So Jesus comes by and Bartimaeus, I don't know, maybe he even felt the ground shaking because there were so many people. Maybe he heard them talking. And so Bartimaeus then makes a certain cry in Mark chapter 10. But I want you to notice, before you take note of the cry Bartimaeus makes, I want you to notice, he says this to those who are close by, what's happening? What's going on? And so their answer to him was this, that Jesus of Nazareth is passing you by. I love that phrase. Luke especially brings it out. Jesus of Nazareth is passing you by. You ever feel like Jesus is passing you? Just coming alongside of you? So when Bartimaeus hears that Jesus of Nazareth is passing him by, he cries out. But I want you to notice he doesn't cry this. He doesn't say, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. I want you to notice he doesn't say this. Well, who's that? He doesn't say, can you tell me who Jesus of Nazareth even is? He knew somehow who Jesus was. He had probably heard stories that he had opened the ears of those who couldn't hear, that he had given sight to those who are blind, that he even raised someone who was dead. And so here's this blind man sitting by the side of the road trying to get some money. Maybe, I doubt if he had a Tim cup, but maybe he had a, you know, some kind of a cup or some kind of a bowl for people to put change in and, and, and to help him out and to show some kind of mercy to him. But here he is, after he's told that Jesus of Nazareth is passing you by, he yells out, he screams, if you will, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And so he cries and he tells again after after Jesus asks him a question, he says, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And so here's these two cries of blind Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David. It's a messianic title. He had insight that many other followers didn't really have at this point. He understood that Jesus was the Messiah. He understood that Jesus was the Savior. He understood that Jesus was the light of the world. He understood that Jesus was the hope of the world. And guess what? He realized that if he didn't get Jesus' attention, there was no hope for him. That he would remain blind the rest of his life, spiritually and physically. And so there are good people probably standing next to him telling him, don't, don't be so loud. Be quiet. You're making a scene. I don't want people looking at us. Keep quiet. And he didn't care. He feared this is a chance of a lifetime. Amen. You know, I'm going to take every opportunity that I, that I possibly can here. And, and I'm going to cry out even louder and, and more. And so even though he was rebuked, he says, I'm going for this. I'm not taking any chances whatsoever. And so he cries out again, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now imagine this, and I would deal with this thinking about the compassion of Jesus. Here he is, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the creator of all things. He holds all things together according to the book of Colossians, and he stops. He hears Bartimaeus cry out for mercy, and he stops, and he looks, and he listens, and he learns, and he finally says, you know, he gives a command, bring him over here. And he says to Bartimaeus, with, with great compassion, he says, Bartimaeus, what is it that I can do for you? What, what is it? What, what, can, what can I do for you? I mean, to think that Jesus is standing still here and he calls him over. Can you imagine the people around Bartimaeus? I wonder what they thought. Hey, he's calling you. Get moving. You know, uh, he jumps up, gets rid of his cloak, his coat, 
And he gets to Jesus. And so Jesus, I think in this question, he knew exactly that Bartimaeus was blind and that Bartimaeus had some needs. And so he says to Bartimaeus, however, maybe to distinguish between felt needs and real needs, he says, well, what can I do for you? Imagine that. What can I do for you? What would you answer? I asked you that question before. What would you answer? Uh, what, what, what would you say is the most important? Request for restoration. Now, it's interesting that Bartimaeus didn't say, you know, what I want is, is uh, I'm, I'm seeking prestige. I'm seeking uh, power. I'm seeking privilege. Somehow I, I want fame and fortune and more friends and, and finances and, and even help my family to be wealthy and, and so forth. No, all he cries out for is mercy at this point. And then when the Lord says, what is it that you want? He says, I, I want my sight. And Jesus realizes, though, that there's this difference between felt needs and real needs. And he deals with his real need first. And so what we find here is this complete cure. The great physician, you know, one of the last miracles that Jesus performs here before the cross. And he gives them clear vision. But I think the clear vision was spiritual first. And so Jesus tells him then, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately, he uh, recovered his sight and followed him. Now, I take it from go your way, your faith, that Jesus, in essence, said this. Here's the real need. This is the real need. You, you need to heal your soul. You need to have spiritual sight because your soul is what's really important. And what does it profit you if you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul. And so he says, your faith has also made you whole. And so Jesus heals blind Bartimaeus and he gives him a command, go your way. And immediately he went, but I think it's interesting, isn't it? That this compliance shows a commitment on Bartimaeus's part that he left and what did he do? He glorified God. Can you imagine being blind, not seeing forever? We don't know whether he was blind from birth or not, but, but he, he, he was blind, he couldn't see. And imagine that the very first thing he saw when his, height, his, his sight was restored was the face of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? The face of Jesus. And so he followed him and he glorified God. And there was a whole multitude of people who knew him and knew that he was blind and they glorified God because they saw that this blind man could see. I wish if I had a singing voice, I'd sing our conclusion to you, but I'm not. I don't want you leaving discouraged. There's an amen, you see. But I want to I want to close with three songs that I want you to think about. I think Bartimaeus would would have loved if he were here today to sing with us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That's why he cried out for mercy. I once was lost, but now I'm what found. Was blind. But now I see.